I recently launched my first product using Gelato as my print-on-demand supplier, and it was my calendar for 2026. Now, some of the things about my launch went really well, but there were some other things that I wish I knew first before selling my calendars that would have saved me time and money and frustration. So I wanna share some of those with you in this video. And first thing is how I sold the calendars. I used my Shopify website. I love Shopify. They have so many ways that you can extend their site to be able to use different print on demand companies. And Gelato has a free app that you can just really plug and play in your Shopify. It takes a few configurations. I was able to easily exclude all of the products in my Shopify account that I did not want Gelato to fill. For example, I have over 300 different animal art prints that I make my own prints for here in my studio. And I don't want Gelato automatically fulfilling those for my customers, especially because on my website, I see that they're are made here in my studio and you want to have accuracy in advertising so I was kind of nervous about that but when I did the integration it was so easy just to exclude those products and I was able to have it fulfill automatically only the calendars when they sold because that's the only product currently that I'm selling using gelato all of that said even though the integration was easy it doesn't mean that everything else in my product launch went as smoothly you now some of these things I'm about to share with you are specific to Shopify, but many of them are not. So you're gonna need to know these regardless of how you are selling your art products online. This video is sponsored by Gelato. So if you would like to sell your art on a variety of different products like calendars, t-shirts, coffee mugs, like a whole bunch of different things, check out what they offer in the description. There's a link down there. And if you follow that link, you will get 50% off your first sample order. All right, well, now let's get into the information. So I launched my calendar and orders started coming through, which made me so excited because honestly, I haven't been selling a lot on my website lately. People haven't been so interested in purchasing art prints. I think that's because at the art fairs that I do, they purchase art prints there. And then when they sign up to my newsletter, they've already got some of my prints. And so to offer them something different that they can only purchase online that's kind of an exclusive limited time offer is a really good strategy right now for my business. And so that's why I've been exploring print on demand options more. So I was excited to see that I sent out my newsletter and calendar orders were rolling in. But then I was stressing out immediately because the orders weren't going through automatically like they were supposed to. I was getting emails and kind of error messages that were saying that the payment wasn't configured and so that they couldn't process the orders once they were arriving at Gelato. Now on my Shopify site, I was capturing the customer's credit cards and I was receiving payment, but then Gelato wasn't automatically receiving payment. Thinking about it now, it's pretty obvious that Gelato would need some way to pay for the orders that they were receiving from me. But I just didn't really think about it when I configured it. And it wasn't listed as one of the things that I needed to do when I was configuring the plugin from Gelato to Shopify. This added a lot of stress to me because I wasn't sure whether I was going to be able to submit those orders to Gelato or if I was going to have to cancel the orders and ask the customers to reorder. I wasn't sure how it worked. But luckily, there's a way for you to manually approve and put through the orders with your own payment method after you, they submit the order. So it kind of saves everything in the system. It does take a lot of extra time though, because once I got my payment methods configured and I put my credit card in there and a backup credit card just in case. So if the first credit card did not go through, the second credit card would. Then after that, all of the orders went through automatically and that made my life a lot easier. So definitely make sure to configure your payment settings. And here's exactly where you go to do that. Log into Gelato. So this is your home screen. When you get there, just click up here in the top right. And then you will see down here, it says billing. Click that, go to payment, and then you can configure your payment methods. You can upload money into a wallet if you would like. And then you can also add credit card information here or your PayPal. The next issue I noticed was that every time an order was processed in US dollars, which is what my customers were paying with since I'm here in the United States, then it was being transferred and changed over into euros when it, were, it was needing to pay gelato. To make sure this is not happening in your store, what you wanna do is go over here to stores. This is the gelato homepage, but it's in this menu here on the left and you can 
see I have a store here configured because this is what it looks like after you install the app. If you want to change any of the settings, what you can do is go to edit store details. And in here is where you want to have the billing currency. By default, it's going to say Euro. Just make sure you set that to USD. And then you go down to the bottom and click save changes. Next are sales tax exemptions. If you're an artist and you are selling as a reseller through Gelato, which we all are, then we qualify to not have to pay sales tax twice because that's what you're doing essentially. If you do not fill out your exemption forms and submit them to Gelato, you will be paying the sales tax that the customers submit to you through your website. And then you will also be paying the sales tax that Gelato requires that you pay them when you purchase the orders. And I wanna give you a full picture of this. So let's just say that you have a calendar priced at $30. I'm going to use big round numbers here so it's easy to illustrate. And all of the costs considered when it comes to the cost of the calendar, the shipping, everything when it, for the processing fees, whether you're using Etsy or Shopify to process these orders, everything costs $20. And you're doing free shipping for the customers. So you're wrapping that shipping cost in that $20. You're selling them for $30. So you have $10 profit. Now, if the calendars are costing you around $11, and then your shipping is around $8. You've got $19 there that's taxable by Gelato if you do not fill out these forms correctly and submit them before you launch your products, which is the mistake I made. So let's just say that your sales tax is $2. We're going to round up just because it's going to make easier numbers to understand here. So if you're only making a $10 profit and then you are losing $2 of it, that's 20% of your profit that you are losing by not filling out a sales tax exemption form. Before I walk you through exactly how to do this, I also want to explain, and this seems complicated, but there are single and multi jurisdictions jurisdiction exemptions. A single jurisdiction exemption is for your state that you're selling in. You will have a tax ID number issued to you from the state that you are filing and paying sales taxes through. You're going to need this number. So make sure to have that on hand before you go filling out all the things that I'm about to show you. But you'll also want to consider applying for a multi-jurisdiction exemption if you're selling to people all across the United States, which many of us are if we're selling online. In my case, I was able to fill out the single jurisdiction form and get it approved within two days. But the multi-jurisdiction, I've been waiting on for a week and a half, maybe two weeks now, and still nothing has happened on it. So it is harder, I think, to get the multi-jurisdiction forms approved through Gelato, at least from my experience. But what I've done in the description is provide you links to where you can get the forms and learn how to exactly do this on the Gelato website, but I'm also going to show you where to go on their website now to submit those forms. At the top right, you go to Billing and then to Tax Center. Then there's all this information about taxes here, and this says Resale Certificate. This is what you want. Now you can get a resale certificate You can just click there, and then it's going to have a form here that you fill out, add an exemption certificate, and then you add whatever state that you're from, and then you continue to fill this form out with all of the information that you have, and then you hit submit at the end. Then they will approve it for the single jurisdiction. Now, if you need to do the multi-jurisdiction, go to the link that I provided in the description of the video, and it will pull up this page for you. That's talking about sales tax exemption for marketplace sellers. Now, if you scroll down, there is a section that has the multi-jurisdictional sales tax form. And so you wanna click here. You can download this and fill this out. If you go back to this page, there are instructions here. It says put your home state sales tax number on each line labeled as state resale unless otherwise indicated for the state below. So then there are specific instructions on here for each state. So then you follow those and you fill all of this information out. Then how you submit it is you go back here through resale certificate, get resale certificate. You'll add an exemption certificate and you'll fill all of this stuff out 
but before the last step, it'll give you the option to upload a form rather than submitting their form. If you have any problems with this, there's an email here and I've emailed them a couple of times. They get back to you really quickly. It's resale certificates at gelato.com. They'll answer your questions and help walk you through every step of the process. So definitely use this email as a resource if you have questions, because that's what I did to figure this out. It's a bit confusing. With all of those settings in place, my Gelato Shopify integration is working like clockwork. Everything is automatically processing now. When people purchase through Kansas, at least, I am not having to pay sales tax twice. And a large amount of my customers are from Kansas. So this is a good thing for me. I'm hoping over the next week or two, eventually I will get the multi-jurisdiction form approved. I'm gonna post in the comments if I do get it approved or if I don't and anything else follow-up wise. So that way, if you're interested in how that goes, you can find that information there in the future. But all in all, I'm really pleased with how this is working for my business. Right off the bat, the first day I sold 15 calendars, which is amazing. And the customer feedback that I got from these calendars was so good. Not only did I like the calendar and think it was printed really high quality, but my customers did too. And this makes me super happy because ultimately that's what I want is happy customers who will want to purchase from me again next year when I put out another calendar. And I gotta say, a few of the orders the customers received two days after they purchased from me. This is mind blowing because I've used print on demand before and I've never had a customer receive their item two days later. Usually it takes two to four days, maybe five days for it to be in production and then it will ship to them. So they might be waiting a week and a half to two weeks before they get their order. Not every order arrived so quickly. Some of them did take about a week. I had a few customers with slow transit times, not because of gelato, but just because of the postal service and how, you know, sometimes things just take a while to get through the system. But Gelato got the orders fulfilled very quickly, quicker than any other print-on-demand company that I've ever used. So this makes me want to try out more of their different products for my customers in the future. If you'd like to learn more about how I made my calendar, go check out this video. It's a complete walkthrough, shows you every step of the process. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.